In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a day to night time-lapse effect. Let's go. This video is made possible by today's sponsor, Videoproc. If you're a time-conscious video creator who cares about getting fast results, then check out Videoproc, a video processor, downloader, and recorder all in one. One great feature I personally love is I can merge multiple clips together by first organizing them in the order I like, even if your video files are in a different format or codec, such as MP4, MOV, or HEVC. Then selecting Merge down here on the right, and then choosing my output format. Once the super fast encoder has finished, I've got my finished video that includes all of my original clips. Join the Video Proc version 3.7 giveaway event via the link below. You'll get a license code to try out more features. Now diving straight into the tutorial, we need a main clip, which is going to be this shot here of someone taking a photo. And generally I'm looking for something where we have some sort of highlighted sky that'll make it easy to remove. But I'm gonna show you a few different ways we can do this. The second is this time-lapse shot here, which goes from day into night or kind of into night. And we're gonna exaggerate that a bit more. And the third is just this image of a moon. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my clip here, just right click and create a new comp from selection. So we have this clip here laid out on the timeline. Now what I want to do is the first thing is we need to 3D camera track this so that we can put in our elements into the background. So what I do is I come up to animation down to track camera. Now once that's done, I want to select a part here in the background because we want our clip in the background to match what's in the distance. So if I select something here in the foreground, that's gonna give me a very different perspective from something Thing in the background. So I'm selecting here in the background, I'm just gonna create a null and camera. Now I can also just delete the 3D camera tracker on that layer, we don't need that anymore. Then I'm ready to just drag my time-lapse in behind. Now as soon as I've done that, we can't see the time-lapse because it's obviously behind that layer. So what I need to do is we need to remove the sky. Now, the reason I've picked this tutorial is because I have a few different ways we can go about doing this. And in this video, what I'm gonna do is layer those up in order to get the results that I need. Now, if you're interested in diving into more detail about all of these things that I'm gonna show you in this tutorial, I cover all of this in my Motion Effects Pro course each having its own video and I dive into a lot more detail. So it's really when you end up with a clip where you just try one method and that doesn't work and you try another, it's about using multiple methods together in order to get the best results. So one method I'm going to use here is I'm just going to come up here to the roto brush, double click my layer, and I just want to roughly start drawing out on this dark part of the image. So this is really easy I'm using Alt here just to remove sections that I don't want. And I'm not worrying about all of these lines up here. I'm just trying to get basically the main part of it. So this is a really easy technique because it's something that's really straightforward and easy to use, the roto brush. I'm just gonna extend, extend this all the way out. Every time I'm moving along, I'm looking for things that are not being selected by the roto brush. And I just wanna go through and just make sure that everything's being selected in the way that I need it. So you can always keep going back and readjusting this but it's just about getting the, the best possible mask at this early stage. So we're gonna go through and refine all of this, like I said, it's just about getting most of it in this first one or a rough outline of what we need and adjust things however we need. So I'm just going back through and readjusting anything that isn't quite getting picked up by that roto brush. Okay, so like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. I think I've got it pretty good where it is now. Now I can go back to my original clip here and just have a look. Now at the moment it looks pretty rough and that's okay because we just wanna come up here. We wanna add a little bit of a feather, maybe around nine. And what I can do is also shift the edges here so I can expand and shrink the edges. So I'm just gonna shrink this edge down maybe to around there. I can even feather this up less or more depending on what I'm going for. Now with the time lapse in behind that, what I need to do is I need to make this 3D. So what I first need to do is make it 3D. With that null that we tracked in the background, what I'm going to do is hit P on the keyboard, copy that position, 
and paste that over to my background layer. Now I'm just gonna scale this layer up, which is that time lapse, because we want it to fill the background of that shot. Now you can see it's already stuck, and I'm just gonna reposition this slightly here, just to frame out any sort of buildings or anything like that. What I'm also going to do is just reposition this here slightly, just so that it still fills the frame. I'm just gonna scale this down, but I'm trying to remove any of that stuff in the background there. I don't want that stuff interfering with what's going on. Now at the moment, these edges here look really rough and we've lost all of that detail in all these little bits and pieces that were in our original shot. And we wanna bring all that back. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate that layer I'm going to drag it underneath here for the time being and just turn those layers off. So we end up with this. And what I'm also going to do is delete that roto brush and we're going to create a luma mat. So the way we do this is I come up to effect, down to color correction, down to hue and saturation, drag the saturation all the way to zero, come back up to color correction, down to levels. And what I want to do is now start to work on this image by maintaining or exaggerating what's in white, which is what we're going to be essentially see through. And the black part is what we're going to keep. So this is how we're going to get all of that information back, which was lost around these lines here and all the cables and stuff for the suspension bridge. So once I think I've got that in a pretty good spot, what I'm going to do is just take my time-lapse layer. I'm going to bring this layer above, which is our track map. With that bottom layer selected, which is my time-lapse, I'm going to toggle switch this to bring up the track mat settings. And I want to make this luma mat of that photo layer. So as you can see, what that does is it now creates a see-through map so that we're just seeing what is in the sky or essentially the part that we wanted to originally get rid of. Now, one thing we've noticed here is that by just keeping that, we've lost all that detail in the foreground. So what we do is we drag a clean plate underneath. Now you see we've got or we've retained a lot of that detail that we lost. Now the key here is to go back through now and just readjust or finesse the edges of that luma mat to get the results that you're after. So I've messed around with that mask and this is what we've ended up with. So my image has gone quite see-through and the reason for this is because I've removed a lot of that background in order to try and keep as much detail in these cables as possible. Now to bring that information back, we originally created that layer up the top which we can just turn on. And that brings back a lot of the detail here that we lost. Now we've lost a bit of information here in this building. And we have lost a bit of information of these things, but we can just mess around with that, finesse that even more. So I always get questions about how do I get rid of really tricky situations where I've got like really tr uh, lots of small fine lines. Like how do I keep that detail? Well, this is the way that you go about that. You break it down into sections and try and approach it a step at a time and may even consider layering those up. Now, one other thing I did here in my original composition was I added a day to night conversion. So what I did to do this is I created a new adjustment layer, which sat over the top of everything. I came up to effect down to color correction and added the Lumetri color. And with my playhead right at the start, I created a temperature keyframe. I created an exposure. I created one for the whites and also for the saturation. Now, what I did is I dragged this temperature gauge up here a little bit just to make it a bit more of a sunset. I also added a bit more of that saturation to bring out that sunset to really make it pop. The other thing I did was just add a little bit of overall exposure because that sunset's really going to be coming through there. So we want to really exaggerate that. And the other thing I did was also bring up the whites here just to really make that sunset pop. Then I went back down here towards the end and I dragged these right down. So I started to drop the temperature and the overall exposure. I brought those whites back down to zero and I brought the saturation down just a little bit here, desaturated it. 
So we ended up with a transition of the colors over time to help exaggerate that day to night effect. Now, another two things I did here in my original composition was I added a moon effect of it popping up. And just to show you very quickly how I added those in, I first dropped in an image of a moon here. I made it 3D, so I just made it 3D here. And what I did was with my time lapse, I went down to the position, copied that position and pasted it onto that moon layer, scaled this up by hitting S on the keyboard. So that's stuck here in the background. I created a position keyframe about here on my timeline and then basically moved this up and across and then dragged out on these little markers here to give it a bit of a curve as it comes in. And I dragged the edge of this start over to this position and made these both easy ease. The other thing I did was I added a glow effect over the top of those two. So I'll paste these on for my original composition. And one other thing you have to do is just come over here to the modes and make sure this is set to screen just to help it blend into the backdrop here. I added the Gaussian blur here just to help give it that depth of field because you can see the camera's focus is on the foreground here. The other thing I did was I added this glow effect over the top. Now for the glow, I basically messed around with the threshold, the radius, and I made it basically to be behind. And I also changed this to be A and B colors and gave these A and B colors a yellowy tinge. So these are basically determining that color of, what's, of what that glow is going to be over the top of my moon. I wanted it to be a yellowy sort of glow, so I added that over. And to make it pop out from behind the buildings, all you have to do, take that layer, which is the one which, if I just solo this, which is the one with the roto brush on it, I duplicate it, drag it up above my moon, and then use the track mat settings of the moon layer to be the alpha invert. And what that does is it hides that layer behind the skyline here. So it pops up from behind those buildings. So that's how you basically make the moon popping up like that. And the other thing I did here in my original composition was I added this shot here, which is quite subtle, but it does make quite a difference, which was this time lapse here over the sky reflecting basically off the water, which is what you would expect to see with a time lapse going on in the background and it's attention to those little details that do make a big difference. So there you go, I hope you've learned something in this video. If you like this video, I can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Now you can also check out videos very similar to this over here on the side of screen by watching these playlists. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.